Hey, hi, all. Welcome back to PR Knowledge Center. And uh, in this session, we'll see like uh, how Locus Web Interface is generating a web test matrix and stats, and see that how they are generating graphs and then um, you know transforming the matrix back to the uh, console as well as web interface. Okay, let me quickly get into my IDE. So again, I'm going to use that Visual Studio Coder here. And I'm going to create another program called demo1.py. So now in the same way, I think uh, I'm just importing my, you know, the uh, required methods and classes from Locust. Import. This time I'm importing HTTP user and then constant and then task. And then sequential task set, I think uh, it is required here sequential task set, right? Once I import it, and then I'm going to define my request, I mean sample web test here. Sample request and response uh, class by just passing sequential task set. This basically enables to um, execute my processes in the sequential order, right? And then defining uh, a method right def uh, let's say get users this is one method i'm using and here in this method i'm just uh, holding my response to do self dot get off slash once i get the response i'm just displaying that uh, get method status is right uh, response dot status code right and once it is done i'm going to define another function task define uh, post status this is a post request right so here again i'll store result equal to self dot post of i think uh, i missed it I think we should have a client is so client dot get and self dot client dot post of uh, status is success and I'll print this status post method status is right and uh, response dot status code. Okay, so I just finished all my two functions here and I come over from my class now. So here I just define my uh, test cases here. Two test cases basically getting of users and updating of status, getting of status through a post method. So now uh, I'm going to define another class wherein uh, I'm going to run my, you know, uh, this uh, defined test cases in sequential order. I should, uh, you know, uh, assign it to uh, a different class using a task so i'm just defining a sample sequential test by just passing http user so this is the uh, class we have to define it very fast but i just wanted to execute my uh, test with sequential order and so I just define my uh, uh, processes with the sequential task set and then defining it here and again i'm defining my think time here uh, wait time equal to uh, constant of one and then and uh, i think it is mandatory to uh, assign a host here uh, here i'll take a sample website or example.com okay and once it is done you need to assign you know tasks equal to uh, you know what tasks you have been defined and what is the class name the sample, uh, you know, request and response. You just define it here. That's it. So this is something uh, uh, you need to understand here. A bit. So first, I define my request response load test scenario here with two different methods. Uh, it's actually uh, accepting sequential tasks set as the input uh, parameter to my class. This is the object again. It is going to initiate the process to run in sequential order, 
And then this is normal way of defining my sequential task script by just passing HTTP user. So this is the class which is here to run my load test and then I'm mentioning my host name and it is going to take my host name as this thing and then just fire this get method as just a slash, okay? And then slash of question mark status equal to success, right? Now, once you define this, let me run through and see like how it is working. Okay, so locust minus chef, um, what was the name? Demo one dot five. So when I run this, so again, it initiated my web interface of locust view and going back to my interface, then see that, look at here, I, it, by default, it come up with number of users is of one and the spam rate was one. And then look at here, the host was updated by default with the host I was mentioned in my test script. That is HTTP example.com, right? And you, what you need to do is just uh, click on, you know, the uh, start spamming that's attacking of your web test. Then looking at here, now you can see that uh, get method and post method is hitting here, right? So going to the interface as well here, like how it is running. If you look at here, status, get method status is 200, post method status is 200. So almost all the requests Request are being processed successfully and having status code is 200. That means, okay, response coming from a server. That means my test is running fine. Okay, so going back to your this thing and see that number of requests are sending. So still it is running, hence it is sending requests to server and getting a response back and showing here. And you can see the chart here. So basically, comes up with uh, x axis with the timestamp here and y axis with the uh, you know number of users here by default it is taking one user that was what we have given in the low cast input so now here look at here so no data and here you can see that time and the rate per second and the failures and the users and here are the users and the rate per seconds and the time you can see everything here and also this is something response time coming from the server of 95% till 450. And this is something uh, response time, median, median, median. And you can see all the responses here. And this is something number of users. So as I mentioned, we have given only one user hence it is showcasing to one always. Okay. And going here failures, I have not seen any failures here. Everything is fine. So I mean, exceptions, no exceptions and current ratio 100% get users 50% and uh, post request is 50% and download. So there are these different options it is giving by default, like to download request statistics in CSV, download failures in CSV, download exceptions CSV and download report. When I click on download report, you will get summarized dashboard here with all the requests and response and you know kind of graph and the ratio and that everything is you know combining and generating a report right so only thing is you need to download that report and uh, you know submit your relevant teams and demonstrate to the team okay so so far it is running so going back still requests are sending through server i'm going back to my server and see that still it is sending requests are going now i'm going to stop my so you know the load testing click on stop so these are not refreshing it right so no uh, requests are sending now so this is stopped, no request is running, and you can see that uh, all the stuff here, right? Now going to the, uh, uh, you, know, inter, you know, console here. Here, if you wanted to start that uh, web interface, you need to press control C so that it will stop web interface here. Okay, let me use the case. So by web interface has stopped. Going back here and see that, so when you refresh it, it doesn't load that because you stop your locust web interface. And, but still you can see the stats in here and the kind of uh, uh, stuff you are running through and every uh, request response and request time. Okay. Now, same request, how to run that without having a web interface. So again, locust uh, minus F and demo one dot pi. And here you mentioned user two and uh, mentioned this is something 10 seconds I'm going to give it. 
Um, okay, here I'm say headless. When I run this, it won't start my interface. Definitely, it only uh, start executing and showing everything in the console itself. Okay, see here. So when I go back here and see here, runtime limit set to ten seconds because there is the time I mentioned it here hyphen t, and starting low cost version was this thing, and you can see that ramping two uses at rate of one per second, and uh, so if you look at here. Uh, uh, status and updates are happening it. So almost 10 seconds have been given for two users and this is what the stats. And same thing if I go uh, without having this headless and run this, again it will initiate my locus to interface and when I go on refresh it, you will get the number of users you are giving it here is two and the span rate anyway I think it is called one second and is the time it is having it. So when I start hitting that, so it will start running my you no know, request. So for two users, and I think still you have edit option to edit that. So 1.5 request per second. And you can see that time average size and current RPAs and current values and get requests at 12 and post requests at 13, right? And you just simply um, click on stop so that it will stop my running through. And here, if you look at here, it started one user and come here, two users, two users, two users, two users. Initially, it started with one user and afterwards, it is two, 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 continuously, right? In a similar way, I think initially it was started with, you know, kind of 290 million uh, response time. And then again, this way, this went slowly down and again, it leveraged with the number of users. Okay. So this is something about a locust yo running uh, websites by just writing some sample lotus tips. Okay, so I hope you understand the uh, uh, concept of locust yo running through um, you know Python scripts. Okay, when I press it again, it will again as usual normal. Okay, so this is something you need to write a script here like this way, and then you start running through. Uh, locust interface as well as locust command line interfaces okay so thanks for listening to this video and please subscribe this channel for more videos thank you